I'm Kathy from Eclectic Images and thank you for joining me today. Well, I should say thank you for joining us because we've got our grandson Grayson here with us, as you can tell. So there may be a few back background sort of, um, what do they call it, beatboxing noises happening. <laughs> but we're gonna carry on and see how we're going. So today I'm wanting to work, I wonder if I can actually talk to the same beat as he's doing. Um, <laughs> he's watching Bluey. Uh, but yeah, maybe there's a few sound effects needed. So I'm going to be working with the Dreamcatcher stamp, uh, the Dreamcatcher mandala actually, uh, and then with some other stamps. We're going to do uh, Dreamcatcher mandala and collaging it with mandala border and the rose, one of the rose images out of the rosebud set. But on the second project, I actually want to use a black background, so I'm going to be bringing some black gesso into play. So I want, what I'm wanting to create is two totally different looks with the one stamp. Our inks will have VersaFine Clear Nocturne and VersaMark, but I'm also going to use some of the Card Deco ink pads that I'll be mixing with the pearls to create our colours to paint with. So we've got perfect pearls just in the pearl colour. We'll also be doing a bit of embossing with some black sparkle embossing powder. And we'll have shimmer dust, some glossy accents, and some stickles, and probably some liquid pearls and things as well. So what I'm going to do too is work on different size formats. Let's just take you across, <laughs> and Matthew just caught that shot, and I want him to do another shot over here. Um, so on our different size formats, this is the look we're going for with the collage look with the shimmer dust. So that's on a card size, this is on a 12 by 12. So the sample today I'll be doing will be on a journal page size. And this is just, it's done with the, with the Dreamcatcher stamp in this sample, um, but we'll be doing it today with Dreamcatcher Mandala. But just to show you the very different look by using it with a black background, so black on black. So it's just trying to show how you can mix it up a bit with your stamps and create um, some very different looks, but with the one stamp. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is create our gessoed background for our second card, but we'll create the gessoed background first so it's got time to dry. So I'll grab a bit of card that's going to represent my photo and just pop that onto my base card. Oh, now the base card we're working on today is the BRT Mixed Media cardstock, which is a lovely heavyweight cardstock that can handle everything we're going to throw at it today. So I'll just mark out where I'm going to put my photo and that way I can work the gesso around it because I need enough gesso clear of the photo that you see the stamped image, but I do want it coming in underneath the photo. So let's just get a foam brush and our gesso and paint some on. Now I don't want this, I want it to be applied fairly smooth where we're going to put the photo. You're getting there. You're getting there, are you matey? Okay, so I'm wanting to get a reasonable coverage where we're going to stamp the image. But I just want to flick the edges out. I don't want it to be finish as a regular shape. So now we're heading in behind where the picture's going to go. I'm just going in the one direction and I'll just flick those edges up and make sure that finishes off on a ragged line. I'm just going to bring my card in again just to make sure. Hmm, I think I'll actually put a bit more gesso in behind the picture. Let's pop a little bit extra on and I might bring it down a little bit lower as well just to make it a bit more interesting. Okay, I'll put my brush to one side so I can wash that later. Put our lid securely on the gesso. So that's just got to sit and dry for a few minutes. So while that's happening, we'll create our other piece. So I'll pop that to one side. I'm going to move a few things out of eye shot a bit so that we're not in the way of the camera. So here's our general size bit of card for creating our shimmer dust look. Now the trickiest thing with this one um, is when you're doing the mandala, 
I want to do the little extra gem on the bottom of it. So when you look in the packet here, you've got the two bits to the mandala and you've got two extra gems as well. So they're all separate pieces. That way you can use the gems with other stamped images. You can use this just as a mandala without having it looking so much like a dream catcher. But you've also got these great two gems that can be used for other things as well. But if I want to add it into my mandala image, I need to make sure that I allow enough space to fit it on the bottom, particularly working on a limited canvas area. So for example, on our card, I've had to stamp the mandala quite high so that that gem fits on the bottom. Where I've got something like the scrapbooking page, it doesn't matter, heaps of room. And in fact, on this one, when I've done the mandala border behind, I've actually inked it and stamped, in, that's, that's not the halfway point, I've actually stamped this side and then I've stamped a lower bit and extended it out. I don't think that makes sense. Uh, <laughs> but when I stamp it on a smaller one, it'll just be the one stamped image. But on the scrapbook page, I've actually made it go longer and higher. Okay, so I'm just looking at where this is going to be so that I can fit that gem neatly in the bottom. So I'm gonna take that up a bit higher because where I place the mandala will also affect where we put in the rosebud that we're collaging in. Okay, so I think that's about, that's pretty good there. Okay. Which means my rosebud is going to want to come in I want it coming off the mandala piece. Okay, so I want that about there. All right, I'm just gonna leave that little block in the bottom there just at the moment while I get this stamp inked up and stamped on. Now I don't want to use the whole image, so I'm going to pop a little bit of tape over the bits that I don't want to see. It's just the leaf and the stem that we don't want. So I'm going to put a bit of tape in there. It's going to take a couple of bits of tape just to make sure I cover up that part of the image that we don't want. sneak one bit up just there okay now I'm happy that when I ink I'm just inking the part of the image that I want but I've just got to make sure that I am getting all the lines that I do want it's a little bit tricky a bit fiddly but it'll be worth it okay let's ink that up with our versifying clear nocturne I'm just checking that I'm getting to the bottom petals that I want. Then we take that tape out of there. And as you can see, this part of the stamp isn't inked. Now I have been known to do that and then still stamp it with the tape on it. it totally defeats the purpose. Okay, we want it on a bit of an angle. And now that I've got that positioned in my head, I can take that little piece out. Let's stamp that down, hold it there for a moment, let that ink absorb into the card. Nice, very happy with that. Okay, let's now get our top part of our Dreamcatcher mandala and we pop a mask over the rosebud because we definitely don't want any mandala upsetting that image. So now we ink up again with Versify and Claire Nocturne, making sure I've got the whole image covered well. 
And remember we were down about just about a centimetre from the top of the page. And we need a really good press here because we've got a mask to get past. So really pressing quite firmly around there. That's come out pretty nice. So now we can cover that. Oh, actually, we'll get the gems on first. So ink up our chain of gems. Now this will position so that the gems are just touching the rope of the Dreamcatcher part. Again, a nice firm push, particularly on that side where it's coming up to the mask. Lift up. And hopefully we've got just enough room to tuck in our little gem at the bottom with our spacing hopefully fairly even, top and bottom. So it was a little bit fiddly that working out at the start, looking at where it was going to stamp. But it means we've got, it's a little bit different top to bottom, but it's not too bad. I'm quite comfortable with that. Now I can mask this top part. And I think the dog's just seen a bunny out the window or something. Okay, let's ink up the mandala border and we'll collage this in behind the others. So this is going to be going, becoming almost the base to the flower. I want to tuck it in between a couple of those lines of gems. And it comes out just out the top. So I'll place it where I want it. And then really going to push. because now we're trying to get past two masks at this point. Really going to push that bit. Carefully lift up. Then we'll do a reveal and see what we've got. Okay, that's come out pretty good. Now I'm going to leave that mask at the moment because we'll... Oh, I'll do... No, I'll do a quick heat set first and then we'll mask that again, ready to put our shimmer dust on. So just a quick go over with the heat gun. I love the way you can look at your stamps in a different way sometimes when you're looking at them from a collaging point of view and see what you can layer together and just create a whole coordinated image there. So let's cover that rose back up again. Now the shimmer dust I'm using today are Peacock and Jacaranda. And I'm going to do, because I'm going to colour the rosebud in Peacock, I'm going to use Jacaranda mostly over the Dreamcatcher area and the Peacock just sort of on the periphery. And then, so you get the Peacock hit out here and then painted there. So let's pop our Jacaranda on first. It's going to be our main colour. Then some peacock. Now I also don't want too much over that gem because I want to be able to pack colour that gem in. So I'm just going to put my finger in the way a bit there. Well, I pop, uh, pop way too much peacock on. Let's get a little sprinkle there. Okay, Peacock's very enthusiastic today, so what we're going to do is just grab a dry pouncing brush and I'm just going to spread that out a little bit and just break this up a bit, otherwise that's going to come on way too heavy. So let's just break it up a little bit before we start adding the water. Okay, because I know how dramatic the shimmer dusts are once we add the water. I was just aware that that was going to go everywhere. Okay, let the magic begin. I'm going to 
actually just give the card a bit of a spritz on the other side so it doesn't buckle up too much on me. A bit more over the jacaranda part. Okay. Now if I want to move those colours around a bit, I could get that same pouncing brush. See how we've got a bit of a gap in there? We can just pick up a bit of colour on our brush and just get those blending in together a bit. We might want to just get a bit more coverage over the actual mandala part, but I want to leave that quite speckly out on the edges. I don't want to mess with the organic nature of that. Now, the other thing we want to do is we now want to take that back a bit. I know it seems crazy to put all that beautiful colour on and then lift a whole lot out, but I don't want to lose our stamped image. So that, we're still seeing the lovely dream catcher there. Just dry out here a little bit as well. And lift that up and I'll just dry my workstation underneath. And we'll lift that mask out and hopefully it means our rosebud is nice and clear. Got a few dots there, but not too bad. Okay, so now I'm going to leave that piece to dry a bit while I come back to our gessoed piece. So let's pop that piece to one side and make sure this is nice and dry before I bring in our gessoed piece. We'll turn it around so you can see more of what we're doing. So this is where our picture is going to go. Here's where our mandala is going to go. So this time I just need to make sure I've given these stamps a quick clean because this time we're inking up with Versamark, not Versafine Claire. So I do not want to get black all over my um, Versamark pad. And let's put that pretend photo back in again. So we want our dream catcher to be mostly visible, but maybe have the picture overlapping it a little bit. So that's where we're going to pop it on here. Okay, so I'm just looking at that. I also want to get my bit of my embossing powder ready, get the lid open ready so I can get the powder on. And I have a catching sheet. I usually keep a catching sheet that I label for glitter so that I don't then accidentally put glitter back in with my standard embossing powders. Okay, we get our Versamark ink pad. And if I wanted to, I could actually pop something like this as a guide just there so that when I come so once I've taken that away when I come back I've got an idea of where I had that positioned so let's ink that up generously with the Versamark good press down Lift up and let's get our embossing powder on. Look at all of the sparkles, yes. All the sparkles look great. They do, don't they? Nana's going to put some more on too. So we can tip them down, yep, and then we're going to heat them. Heat so them. we get our stamp. Yeah, but how do you get this one? How do we get that stamp? Well, we'll use that stamp on another picture. So we press down. But how? Well, oh, you can take it off the block, that's fine, mate. Oh, did you already? I've already did... used that one, yeah. So you already did this one? Mm hmm, already did that one. No. down, making sure that the embossing powder covers all the stamped area. Nice, and I'm just checking and it looks like we haven't got any embossing powder where we don't want it. So that's great because guess who didn't use her anti-static pad? 
but the gesso must have been nice and dry for us. Okay, let's give that a heat. Black on black looks so good. I just love it. Just letting that everything warm up a bit and the heat down warm up a bit. Starting to change. Starting to change. Yeah, it all looks very sparkly when it changes. It moves and sparkles. Okay, that has got that all nicely changed. Isn't that magnificent, the black on black? Yes, and, you, and with the sparkle already there, it means I don't have to add glitter over the whole lot because it's already there. It's sort of a bit like cheating, but okay. Now, for our colouring for this, we're going to get our little ink pads pop them on my glass mat. I have some blue, I have some green, I have some pink. So we've got sky blue, spring green and candy pink. I'll be using my a water brush. Probably not a broad one, I'll only need a finer one than that. Of course I've picked up all the water brushes that aren't the one that I actually want. I'll get to it eventually. That's the one I want. Okay, we also need a little bit of our Perfect Pearls powder. And I'm going to pop a little bit with each of those colours. Is that what it's all about? Bit of blue there. Okay. Mixing that in. So this is going to make these inks into metallic paints. But on the black, it'll probably still be quite a subtle colour. So what I'm hoping for is just a, an opalescence type look. So let's just start painting in. I won't be painting the whole lot. I'll just pick out a few zones to add colour to. And rather than stopping and cleaning the brush repeatedly to change colours, I'm going to just do pick out some areas in the green and then I'll come in with the other colours. I might pick out a few gems there in green. Although I'll probably come over and add some pearls over those later. my brush off and we'll pick up some of the pink so I'll mix the pink in and 
need a bit of extra moisture in there, that's better. Oh, now I've probably got to weigh too much. <laughs> it's always a way, isn't it? that green it's going to create a bit of an orangey shade in there so that gives us another color and a bit more of the pink maybe to the blue. I think the blue should be really pretty on the black. And again, by touching some of the blue to some of the green, that's going to create another shade in there. I think I've just about got enough painted, I reckon, by the time I've done this little line around there, that's going to be enough. Color. I then want to add some to a couple of those gems and then we'll let this one sit for a bit. So let's add some color into these. And I'm actually thinking that's just a bit too yellowy greeny looking. Let's just pop some blue in there and change that colour a bit. That's better. I was looking, I was just looking a bit too bold where I wanted quite a soft look. There we go. Wow, is that nice? Okay, let's leave that to dry and go back to our first piece. Woohoo, it's looking good. Okay, now I don't need these colours for the, the next piece, so I'm going to just clean that up a little bit. We do want a little bit of peacock for our colouring, so I'll pop a little pe peacock on here. Forgetting just how enthusiastic that peacock is today. Right, so that's cleaning up, clean off our water brush. And we're going to pick up some peacock and just actually we could add some perfect pearls to this as well. I know the shimmer dust do have some shine to them, but that doesn't mean that a little bit of extra won't be really nice. So let's mix that in there and just make it extra shiny. And I will have a second brush on the go here so that we can add colour where we want it. And very quickly come in and just let that bleed out a little bit. Now remembering that this is not cotton blend cardstock, this is the mixed media cardstock so it's not your ideal card for blending watercolors doesn't mean you can't do it but it's not going to be as easy to blend on 
as something like the cotton blend cardstock is. And it's something where if you're working in a journal yourself, you've got to experiment with the the, uh, the paper that's in the journal to find out what you can do with it. So definitely want to keep some of the petals, like where the little bits overlap, keep those white. So I'm looking for where there might be areas to have lighter and darker colour. dark into the center of the, the rose. Okay. So I think that's looking rather pretty. And as I said, we ties in with the colour that we've got top and bottom. By using mainly the purple around this area, it means the rosebud stands out a little bit more. So I'm going to need a little bit more colour on some of these petals. Oh, we're back to the beatboxing. <laughs> just dabbing in a little, a couple of little spots of darker colour, just to give it a little bit more. 3D quality to it. There we go. Now, there's a whole lot of colour there. If I wasn't working on other projects, I would stop and make a lovely smushy background with that. Okay, but here's how our two projects are looking. But we still need to add some pearls and things. Oh, before I finish, I'm wanting to paint in our bottom gem there. So we'll do that with the jacaranda as uh, the um, peacock as well. Now, one of the things when you're painting faceted gems is to not actually colour everywhere. Leave some little bits of white showing. And we'll just shade down from this end. And up from this end. And if we have that quite dark, we can just sort of blend them into the middle. Now I've got a bit too much there, I'm going to move some down. I'm quite aware that. I'm on a cardstock that's not so suitable for watercolouring. I still want to get a little bit of watercolouring happening. I 
I know I'm asking a lot of it. That's more the look we want. Touch a bit of water in there without too much. Nice, okay. Stop there, lady. And then I didn't stop, did I? No, but I'm stopped with the middle bit. I'm just adding a bit more around some of the edges, but I'm not touching the middle bit anymore. Okay, so we let that one dry. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to our gesso one and add some pearls to it. We don't need any stickles on this one because it's already got all that glitter. And just have a look at those lovely pastel looking colours there. But what colour pearls do we want? Do I really want to go bright and have something that just contrasts with it totally? Or do I want to go more subtle? <laughs> oh, see, there's a softer pink. Oh, no, I'm going to go bright. Sorry, Matthew. Okay, I'll just test that out in my scrap, make sure it's flowing well, and it is. fill in some of those gems that are naturally part of the design. But you can also add them in other places that you want to. Just be careful once you've put some on that you don't smudge your hand into them as you're putting on more. I like the bright. I'm so sorry, Matthew. <laughs> so that's finished off that piece and, the, and then picture that that we would have our, our photo in there. So it, it's there behind it. I might also then with a piece like this, when I've had a look at pictures that I'm putting on um, and what text I want to add, I may add some extra little dots of liquid pearls like you could just come up in like a top corner and be adding just a trio of dots or a little chain of dots. Just to tie in with the piece a little bit more, we might do put our picture in and then use perfect the liquid pearls to do a little bit of a frame around that picture. Again, bringing the colour out to the edges of the card. But that's something to play with once you work out what picture you're wanting to use on it. So our last little bit before we finish up is to come back to our collage piece. And I'm just gonna run the heat gun over it a little bit just to make sure it's nice and dry. And we're gonna add a little bit of glitter to this one and some glossy accents. Because glossy accents is gonna make this gem really stand out. So let's grab some diamond stickles and we might with the stickles pick out the rope part of the mandala. So I'm just squeezing and guiding it with guiding the nozzle with my hand so I'm not just getting a dot, I'm trying to not totally colour in the rope, 
but trying to get a slightly longer shape than just a dot. So I'm sort of dragging the, the nozzle of the stickles as I'm putting the colour on, the, the glitter on, sorry. So that goes all the way around till we meet the rose. And we might have just a few bits on some of the sort of almost joining type parts of the design. Some violet liquid pearls. Just squeezing on my scrap to make sure it's running nicely. And we'll pick out these gems here. So bigger dots on the bigger ones. Smaller dots on the smaller ones. So you really find that you, to get your different size dots, it's how much you squeeze the paint but also if you're just touching the paint to the card and not the whole nozzle you'll be able to get a smaller dot and you might just do a dot where each of those gems joins up to our rope and a dot just in the middle of there okay let's just finish off with the glossy accents on that gem see how lovely that gem by trying to get that extra depth in those bits how lovely that looks it really even without the glossy accents it looks like it's got depth to it so look a little bit cloudy straight away but that is going to dry to this gorgeous 3d gem <laughs> what else can I call it it's a gem okay if I wanted to pick out the rose bud more, we could add some glitter around there, or we can just leave that. And it's actually, even though that's our main piece, our gems are starting to come out and our glitter's coming out and bringing that background stamp into the foreground as well. It's weird, but I love so creating too much foreground, but I actually really like the result that we've got from it. So, I hope you like that with creating several looks with the one stamp either making it a collage and the shimmer dust giving it more random colour and someone's rating the lollies and comparing that with our gessoed one so it's same stamp same dreamcatcher mandala stamp but used two totally different ways okay thank you very much for watching and hopefully you'll look at your stamps in a way of seeing, okay, how can I put them together? How can I create some collage images? Or how can I create some different backgrounds to get a different look from this stamp? So enjoy your playing and we'll catch you next time.